I know you've gotten messages on Instagram or TikTok where it's like basically someone trying to scam you. Yeah. Like I feel like everybody that uses technology is has had that happen. As yeah. Well. I've had it happen. I've literally had people be like, I am a prophet. Is there anyone you want to curse or make fall in love with you? And I've gone along with it. Like, yes, make this person fall in love with me. And like that person's in on it too. And they tell me like all of these things and almost always ends up, send me money. I, I made them fall in love with you. I put the spell, I put the love spell on them. Send me money, right? You probably haven't taken it that far, but yeah, me, <laughs> I have, okay. Basically, one of these people DM'd this girl, Ruby, that she needs to delete all of her social medias and eventually told her that she needs to leave all of her family, block them, fly from Chicago to Florida to now move to Florida, live out there, and basically give all of her money to them. And she's doing it. She's actually doing it that's so peer pressure that's more than peer pressure this is a cult this girl is in a cult and i just want to talk about it because it really 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 <clears throat> makes me mad i'm someone who has been in a cult before literally i had a fifty thousand dollar scholarship to college and the members of the cult basically told me like god will give it back to you at some point you just need to like do this internship i didn't do the internship i went to college instead best decision of my life and it turns out the leader of that ministry i was in was molesting the male staffers so like i've literally been in this i have been in a legitimate cult he was stealing money from us the leader he was this all authoritarian figure mm -hmm. we couldn't watch anything or listen to anything secular on and on and on full-fledged cult like i've been in it i know what it is like okay before we jump into the actual story of what's going on with ruby and how all of this happened i just want to go over a few points literally if you look up how do i know that i'm in a cult these are a few points that will tell you how you know you're in a cult okay i've looked it up and i have literally used these points to recognize that i myself was in one and to get out of said cult i've read them foolproof you read them you're definitely not going to be in a cult yeah seriously it'll make sure that okay i have them on my phone for some reason i love when the wi-fi just like randomly fucking stops working it's spiritual warfare okay. <laughs> i was about to say yo that's kind of i guess all god can do is just like make our wi-fi fuck up yeah god sucks y'all can compare these points to the story that i tell you so you'll have this knowledge prior to the story one is opposing critical thinking. Two is isolating members and penalizing them for leaving. Three, emphasis on special doctrines outside of scripture. Four, seeking inappropriate loyalty to their leaders. Five, dishonoring the family unit. Six, crossing biblical boundaries of behavior versus sexual purity and personal ownership. Seven, separation from the church and this is also a huge one it's not included in this list but it's included in every other list taking advantage of your finances everyone knows that cults will financially drain you so financial extortion keep all of those points in mind as i tell y'all now in summary the story that ruby has posted this video is an hour and 41 minutes long and i have watched all of it and i have really dissected this and compared it to my own story and this girl is knee deep in a cult and she is about to be sucked away it's yeah. honestly really terrifying like i am genuinely scared for her so ruby one night just a random night decided to go on live and while she was on that live some random person named apostle adelia i think is how you say it she messaged in the live god has a message for you please dm me for some reason ruby actually dm'd that person on instagram and was like hey i saw that you messaged me what's god's message this random ass account said, God's message to you is that you need to delete all of your social medias. Ruby says, oh my gosh, I've been feeling like God's been telling me that. Like <laughs> social media is an idol. Which by the way, this is not a special thing for her to think. A lot of Christians already think that like everything around them is an idol, including social media. So like some random person saying delete social media is not confirmation of what you've been already thinking. You've already been feeling guilty because Christianity makes you feel guilty for literally anything you enjoy. That's why you've been feeling guilty. But she acts like this is some sort of confirmation that like this apostle has confirmed to her that her feeling about social media it really was from God. 
Okay. You have my attention. What else has God have in store for me? So this person says, okay, we're going to meet via Zoom. They meet via Zoom. And during this Zoom call, this Apostle Ayla or whatever, she wants Ruby to submit herself to their ministry, set him free. That's their ministry's name. And Ruby has now been called apparently by God to join this ministry, set him free. So Ruby gets off the phone and this apostle texts her and says, you have until June 7th, 2023. That's your deadline, which by the way is his birthday. That was her deadline. Me being an ex-Christian, I have a lot of knowledge on Christianity. God doesn't give you deadlines. That just doesn't happen. God doesn't even exist on our plane of time. Why would God have like a deadline? About Instagram and stuff too. Yeah, about like Instagram. Like all the stuff going on, like get God, off TikTok. God's not Ruby. gonna God's not gonna have a deadline. And plus, this girl has 5.4 million followers on TikTok. I'm pretty sure if God was gonna do anything, he would use her to spread his word via her platforms, not take away these massive platforms to put her in isolation. Regardless, they say you have until June 7th to decide these things. Well, in the meantime, Ruby's family is going on vacation to California and they tell Ruby, you need to decide by June 7th and you need to move to Florida. Well, now Ruby's conflicted because she's trying to decide if she wants to go to Florida to join Set Him Free or if she wants to go to California to vacation with her family. She ends up asking God to show her what she needs to do. She didn't have enough money for the ticket. So she says like, God, if you somehow make it where I have enough money for this ticket to go to California, like I'll know that's your plan. Well, her brother actually buys her ticket, like round trip ticket to California. So she's like, okay, I guess this is God's plan. Like I'm just supposed to stay with my family. Well, whenever she gets to California, she goes to this wax museum. And at this wax museum, she says that she feels like a demonic presence. She feels like an evil, something really creepy. Now, I've been to the exact wax museum that she's talking about. I genuinely think that she is confusing her being creeped out by the wax dolls with a demonic presence. She comes back after the wax museum to the hotel. She tells her family like, something's not right. I feel like I'm sinning. And then she contacts these apostles, which by the way, there's also a man, like this is a married couple. It's apostle Adelia and apostle Berthold, Berthold, Be Bear Berthold, Berthold, yeah, Apostle Berthold, okay. Like an attack on Titan. Yeah, actually, yeah. She tells them, like, I went to this wax museum. They're like, okay, you have been disobedient to God, and that's why you're feeling this way. Like, you've been disobeying him. This is exactly what happens, blah, 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 blah. And she says, I'm really sorry. Repents to God. I'm actually going to fly back to Chicago, and I'm going to get my stuff and go to Florida to be with y'all. Keep in mind, all of this started from a random Instagram DM. That's it. Like a random so DM. scary. Yeah, it's terrifying. She basically tells her mom, like, I am going back to Chicago just to do a few things. She doesn't really tell them the full extent. And then she tells her brother. Her brother's like, why are you going back? She doesn't tell him. Eventually she like breaks and she's like, look, I'm going back because I've been disobedient to God. He starts yelling at her. They get in this big argument where he takes her phone and he basically, I assume, looks through her phone. The next day, they get in this big fight again the next day. So she's back in Chicago and her entire family's like, why are you doing this? And she tells them, I'm moving to Florida, just randomly. Imagine if this was happening to you. Like your daughter just randomly was like, I'm moving to Florida to be with these random people that DM me over the internet. So everyone in her family's like, don't go. What the heck, don't go. She tells the apostles this, the apostles, and they tell her that demons are taking over her family's vocal cords. Yes. And that her family's basically acting from a demonic pressure. They have some very sick people in this world. That is so terrifying. Yes. Isn't what? that isolating members from... Yes. There you go. Ding, ding, ding. You got it. That's one of the things. Starting to attack the family unit and get her separated to isolate her. She's now thinking that her family is satanically like oppressing her. She decides that she is going to tell the apostles that she is going to move to Florida. Whenever she tells them she's going to move to Florida and she's going to join this ministry, they send her 
a contract that she has to sign that says she is now in spiritual submission to this ministry. She is now spiritually their daughter. Which legally binds me spiritually to the ministry as an official daughter of Free Him Now. She signs this contract that says she is now in submission to them. I didn't even know that that was like feasibly possible. That's pretty terrifying. She said in the video that it legally binds her to be in spiritual submission to them. Let's remember one of the points, seeking inappropriate loyalty to their leaders. That's about as inappropriate of a loyalty as you can get, I reckon. Yeah, if you go to church and the pastor's like, look, if you want to come here, you have to literally sign your life away. Don't go to that church. It's a fucking cult. And also, emphasizing special doctrines outside of scripture. I'm not going to go into all of it. I'm not even going to go into the tip of the iceberg, but she uses, like, scripture out of context almost every single time she mentions scripture. She basically says she's afraid of the apostles. Yeah, I'm upset for her. Oh, baby. You're so sweet. Several times she mentions that she is afraid of the apostles in some way or another, and she will basically say that, that that's her having fear of God. Fear of God is not being afraid of God. Fear of God is respecting him. It's not being literally afraid. That doesn't mean it's God being afraid. So anyway, they send her this, she signs it. Well, she has an issue. Her issue is she has three pets and she tells the apostles like, I have three pets. She wants to bring her three pets. Well, these apostles tell her that her pets are idols as well. That she uses these pets as comfort, which is like what pets are supposed to be used for. Pets provide comfort. She basically says the fact that she goes to her pets for comfort means that it's an idol, means that it's sinful, it's disobedient to God. So that day, she decides to give her pets up to a shelter or a foster care. Also told me that I couldn't take my pets on this new journey, this new season that God's putting me in, that I have to leave them behind. You know, this was really hard for me. You know, I was really sad, but I knew I had to do it because I wanted to draw closer to God. I wanted to give, I wanted God to work in me because at this point, I just wanted more of God. And during this, I was contacting shelters and people who could take my pets in. And I found a foster to take them in. But last minute, as soon as I was going to leave, like the day before, the night before, I had already had my bags. Like I had everything ready. I was getting everything ready. I threw away all my things. Um, I packed my life in two suitcases. And my flight was, it fell through. And I had to leave my pets at the building that I was staying at. If that alone doesn't tell you like how manic this girl is and how willing this girl is just to, she is susceptible to literally anything they say she's like being brainwashed by. She gave up her three animals like that because they said God said it. It is actually insane. The day comes whenever she's about to fly out to Florida. She has been feeling convicted because she has kept one thing from them. And that one thing that she has kept from them has been her finances. She hasn't told them about her finances. For some reason, she's like, I haven't been honest with y'all. I haven't told y'all about my finances. I need to um, tell y'all about that. And they're like, you have disobeyed the Lord by not like telling us. So you need to tell us. So she tells them, I make a majority of my money from TikTok, from social media. She also says that she basically like compulsively spends, which I believe because like her outfits are crazy. They're cool, but they're like very expensive, obviously. And they basically manipulate her to let them have access to all of her finances, all of her transactions, to figure out where she spends her money wrong, where she has disobeyed and taken advantage of what the Lord gave her. I, I feel so bad for this woman. Yeah. This is terrible. How old is she again? Uh, I think she's like 20. She talks about how the next day she disobeyed God again because she went and bought groceries. How was she supposed to eat? She also mentions in this story about how she disobeys God by how she eats. She says she eats when she doesn't have to. Did she elaborate on when and why that is? She says she eats when she's bored or she's stressed. That so part, that's, that, that's good. I mean, it's good recognizing that, but you don't have to just wait until you're starving to death to eat. She's acting like foods are idle because she does that too. 
It's just crazy how they how people control people. They start going through her finances and they're like, you don't need to buy this. You don't need to buy this. You don't need to buy this. You need to start spending all of your money strictly on God and his ministry. It's time to go to the airport. The person who's fostering her animals for some reason doesn't show up at her hotel because she's staying at her hotel in Chicago because she doesn't want to stay with her family because they're demons. The person who's supposed to foster her animals doesn't show up. So she just leaves her animals at the hotel. That's horrible. Yeah, I think she had one cat and two bunnies or she just leaves them. And whenever she's talking about it in the video, she frames it as a sacrifice to God. It's like she made a big sacrifice. Like it was a good thing that she left her animals at the hotel. I left them there and that was a huge sacrifice for me. I was very, I was very sad and it was hard for me because I did have a soul tie to them. Somehow the police get involved with the animals and she like apparently prays and everything works out. But I think that the foster people were able to take them in. I don't know. She didn't like clarify, clarify on that. Anyway, she goes out to Florida and she meets these people in person. When she landed in Florida, she said that God convicted her to block every single one of her family members. Dude, they were probably so scared for her throughout this whole process. Like, imagine, yes. like, a mom and dad and a grandma and a brother just all getting, like, ghosted and blocked. And, dude, that's crazy. It's scary. She moved to Florida and blocked every <sighs> single one of her family members. To Florida, of all places. Yeah. That's even more terrifying. Apparently, she had a lot of spiritual <clears throat> growth. It was, like, amazing. But it definitely seems very, very sketchy because, for whatever reason, she doesn't clarify she calls her grandmother and she's like, please buy me a ticket back to Chicago. And her grandmother does immediately. And she flies back to Chicago without telling the apostles. So clearly like she's feeling weird about it. Like she knows deep down inside, this is not right. When she's in Chicago, she starts like just existing. And she's going on about how she was being so disobedient by going back on social media. She was being so disobedient because she was having dreams that were like sexual in nature. She was being so disobedient because she was eating when she was bored. She was being so disobedient because she was literally doing anything. Stripping her of being like human. Yes. With with flaws and little bad habits and stuff. And yeah. And that's the thing about like this type of Christianity. I've been in it. When every <clears throat> single thing that you do, you're shamed for, that is the most exhausting, miserable existence you will ever live. I used to be someone who was ashamed and guilted by the fact that I watched PewDiePie. Like literally, I was like, God hates me because of that. This girl's in that same pattern. Everything she does, she feels shame for. Days have gone by, okay? Days have gone by. And eventually she goes on live. It's just a live. That's just a important note to, to factor in. Well, after that live, she contacts the apostles and she's like, hey, I actually flew back to Chicago. I'm with my family right now. And they condemn her. They're like, you are never, ever allowed to be in this ministry again. You are out. We, we don't want you here anymore. We are casting you out. They sent her a, a specific document for her to sign that was saying that she was no longer a daughter of that ministry. That she was no longer essentially like a daughter of God. It's like this submission form, allow me to be a daughter. This cease form I'm, is telling me that I'm no longer a daughter. I'm no longer under the ministry. I've broken this covenant between God and the process. I honestly, I was shocked. My heart did drop in that moment. And I was shocked, but I didn't really understand what I did. I didn't understand. I didn't have the heart of repentance when I had first read it. I told the apostles I repent and I repented to God, but I, my heart was still not a heart of repentance. So she gets casted out and she gets really sad because she was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? I made them so mad and she falls asleep, okay? She takes a nap, like a depression nap. Well, whenever she wakes up, the apostle, Bartholomew or whatever, messages her and says, you know, I, I really wanna cast you out, but God specifically told me not to cast you out, to okay. make an exception for you. And this is the only time this has ever happened. I have felt that ever for anyone ever. Dude, that is so manipulative. Yes. When I first read that, just that one part, I started crying because I knew right there, God showed me his love for me. God showed his love for me in that moment. God showed me grace and the love of God literally came over me and I just started to cry. And, you know, as I continued to read, you know, with crying, you know, I was so happy, um, you know, 
I was so happy. Um, Apostle Bertha, that this is God's sovereignty. I was determined to remove you, but the Lord decided to show you mercy and I show you mercy as well. And he said, this has never happened before in his entire walk with God. <laughs> Literally a planned out manipulation tactic where he messaged her, you're out, and then messaged her, actually, God forced me to say that you're still in. Not only that, this has only happened with you. So you have a second chance. She made the choice to leave. And then made the choice herself to come back. They made it her choice to come back. Yeah, also. they made it her choice to come back. <clears throat> Let's go back to the cult points. First off, opposing any critical thinking that's been done throughout the entire thing. Every single sense of logic has been thrown out the window. Second off, isolating members and penalizing them for leaving. And then that's whenever they were like, actually, God told us, you're. he still wants you in this. She tells them, hey, I went live while I was back at home. She privated the live but she didn't delete it. Apostle Ayla or whatever says, send me the link. And I think Apostle Ayla saw that she was making money through that live. Mm -hmm. Ruby had privated all of her videos. Well, after Apostle Ayla looked at this TikTok live, which has donations, she told Ruby to unprivate all of her videos and leave them up. Keep in mind, she makes her money from these videos. And now all of a sudden this person's like, actually God's telling me you need to leave all of your videos up. The same account that we originally was like, you need to delete everything forever. We're telling you now, God just changed his mind and you right need to leave. Right after God heard that you make bread. Yeah, I'll right finish. after God saw that ice cream meow makes you $500 alive, God all of a sudden changed his mind and said, keep your freaking videos up. Ice cream so good. Yeah. No, <laughs> this is the worst part. She is now in this video that I'm referring to in a hotel in Chicago because she doesn't want to stay with her demonic family. They tell her, you need to fly back now. Um, we're allowing one more chance. God said, leave your videos up. Literally right now, as I release this video, she's in the process of moving back to Florida. At the end of this video, she basically has a call for action. And she's like, I need to be able to live whenever I am in Florida. I need food, I need shelter, I need money. And my only way of making money has been social media my entire life. Because of this, I need y'all's help financially support me because I don't have anywhere to live otherwise. And then she dead ass says, but because I am not good at my finances, Set Him Free has decided to take all of my things and to manage it for me. So any sort of donation that you have for like my livelihood, send it to Set Him Free's cash app. I am not good with handling with dealing with money. So the apostles, so Free Him Now is going to receive the finances and they aren't gonna help me budget. So they make sure that it's, it's spent on the things that God wants me to spend on and not on my own temporary pleasures. I'm sorry if you do not have PayPal, but the apostles do not use Cash App neither because of a word that the Lord gave to them. And if you wanna look at that word, which if you're a believer in Christ, I highly recommend that you go watch that word. The Free Him Now PayPal will be linked in somebody saved this girl bro what is going on so they literally have this girl telling millions of people to cash app this ministry this is the biggest scam ever it's not even the biggest scam it's like it's a this has to be a crime this sh yeah this should be a crime it's a it's a fucking cult she gets this person with millions and millions of followers that are also children to feel pressured to DM the ministry for her livelihood. They're not gonna use that for her livelihood. They're gonna use that because they're a fucking cult. Anyway, that's where she's at right now. She said once she uploaded this video, she had seven days before she deleted all of these. She probably did this because it like took seven days to create the world and seven's like a holy number. I guess today's day six, so we have six more days. Everybody go to this girl's page and please try to beg her to refrain from doing all this. It's honestly horrifying watching this happen like right before my eyes. This situation's like especially bad because like my situation, I was involved in a ministry that was well known, honestly. And although I was doing a lot of bad things, there were some like benefits, including being around my home and being with people that I know before the ministry. Well, this girl doesn't even have those benefits. She's moving to somewhere that she <clears throat> doesn't know a soul. She is completely alone. And there's some random strangers that DM'd her on Instagram one day. It's really terrifying. I also think something else terrifying about this instance is that I don't think we've, I've seen it in my lifetime on as big of a platform 
as yeah. it is. Like, like it's one thing like to, for it to happen to like this person or that person. It's another thing for like almost six million people to be watching like a girl's finances, well being, mental health. I mean, everything just being put on the line for some radicalized ideology and people like group of people that manipulated her and selling all her stuff and moving away and blocking her family like just it is horrible in every single way i hope anyone that comes in contact with her because there probably will be people who know her from social media that come in contact with her i really hope that they know about the situation and can say like i don't even care say that you are a prophet from god and god said go back home because that's what yeah. she freaking needs yeah. like just hit the reset button just like if you see her walking around in florida just be like ruby Please, I'm a prophet of God. You need to go to your mother's house. You need to unblock your mother and father. You need to call your dad. You need to tell your dad to come get you. You need to tell your dad where you are. And what scares me is she's clearly like afraid of them. She's afraid of their reactions to things. She's afraid of them. And she ends the video thanking them for like how much they obey God. Dude, I, I want to hurt bad people that hurt good people so bad. All of this is assumptions, but it seems like she has some sort of decision making disorder. She doesn't seem like she can, like, rationalize logical these thoughts. Are, these are manic habits, yeah, for sure. Yeah, she has very manic habits even before she said that she spent manically. Anyone who would get a message on Instagram and move across the country, sell everything, give all of their money away, and give their pets away just because of an Instagram message probably is manic or has some sort of decision making issues they probably sent that type of message to so many creators throwing a bait out there and hoping that a fish bites really that's fucked up very fucked up don't be mean to her obviously but seriously like something needs to happen more definitely more attention needs to be drawn to it for sure people need to be trying to step in and help she actually does need help she needs the internet to like hashtag save ruby or whatever get in contact with her family the police even anyway thanks for watching if someone messages you on instagram acting like they're a religious prophet fucking block them report them anyway peace out i have more videos if you want to see anything true crime or commentary check out my channel <laughs>